KDKB started with uh, Dwight Tyndall and Eric Hauenstein. Um, uh, there's all the stories about whether they did or did not meet at uh, Woodstock. I don't think they actually did. I think uh, Dwight could never get there, and they wound up coming back, and so they both actually had tickets for Woodstock, and uh, they, they met later in the weekend, I think, actually. But the, the point was that Dwight was a young guy, he was 21 years old, had inherited some money, and he was a, a music lover, uh, loved radio, he'd been to Kenyon College, he, uh, I, think, uh, I think they asked him not to come back. <laughs> and uh, that was the best break for us that we ever got. Uh, so they were looking for a market and uh, they decided that uh, Phoenix was underserved because Phoenix was the only place, a major uh, market at the time, that didn't have like an underground FM radio station. Because the, uh, the station that I worked on originally, KCAC, was a daytime AM station. We were the only underground AM station in the country. So they, they thought the market looked good. They came out here, and uh, what happened was KCAC at that time was, uh, although it was doing very well, it was in receivership because of previous bankruptcy. Long story short, they decided to sell that station just about the same time that Eric and Dwight came to town. So they interviewed the whole staff and essentially hired the entire staff from KCAC. They all came over here August 1971, uh, KDKB went on. AM and FM. The, I can tell you best about what the listeners were like by telling you a couple incidents that happened in the KCAC days. One of which was, uh, at one point, somebody broke into the station and stole all the records. They also stole the turntables and the cart machines. We were back on the air the next day with donated equipment and the listeners brought us their albums. They just came with boxes of albums and said, here. And we said, okay, put your name on them or something, you know, and, and we tried to get them to put little stickers or something like that so we could eventually get them back to them. But, but literally, that's, that's what the feeling was like in those days. They said, you need the music, we want everybody to hear the music, here, take my albums, you know. Uh, so there was, a, there was a really strong connection between the listeners and the radio station. It was a really strong lifestyle connection very intelligent, uh, understood the radio business. He was the first person that I really knew and worked with that really understood the business and what it was really all about. And uh, he had an incredible sense for music. He was uh, extremely knowledgeable. Uh, he knew music from classical music all the way to, you know, to the rock stuff. He got it with the rock stuff. He also uh, I love to find people who were more uh, folky, sort of the, what we would call singer-songwriter types, and to promote their music. And, and you know, John Stewart became famous because of Bill Compton. Jerry Riopel became famous because of uh, Bill Compton and others. Uh, 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 but there, were, there was just, uh, he was just such a strong guy. And, there, and a lot of times he would do things that you know, I didn't understand. And, and when I asked him about it, he would always have a good reason why he was doing it. Uh, 93.3 KDKB. KDKB AM Mesa.